Welcome back to the Backroad Driver Channel, guys. Today, we've got Sam's 2021 Ford F-150, brand new, just got it in. He's already done a lot to this build, but we're gonna talk about some things under the hood today. We do have big plans for the future of this truck underneath, and it starts today as we talk about some of the things that are not gonna allow us to do what we wanna do ASAP, which is a supercharger, some twin turbos, and you're gonna learn about why in this video. Guys, we're gonna talk about cylinder deactivation, belt driven oil pumps, changes to the Coyote for 2021. And we're also gonna throw on a JLT catch can and show you how that's done. Guys, if you didn't already know, this is the Gen 4 Coyote 5.0 liter V8. Has a few changes on the 21 model. We're gonna talk about them today. Let's get into it. So the first thing you'll notice when you pop the hood on the new Gen 4 Coyote is the battery placement is a little bit different than it has been in the past. It's at an angle now. What that's for is on your power boost models, um, the hybrid model, you're going to have a lot of wiring and components right here that uh, that run to the back and everything. So they've they've set this battery up a little bit different. So it's going to be the same across all models, and they don't have multiple uh, setups. I'll also throw in that the uh, strut towers, you have to access those from inside the engine compartment now. You can get to a couple of the bolts from uh, the fender well, but those are largely covered up. And when you're putting on a uh, puck style leveling kit or any leveling kit that you have to access that strut, you're gonna have to get under the hood to uh, access that this year. Let's dive into some of those big changes on the 5.0 liter V8 for 2021. All of these diagrams I'm going to show you come from the service procedures uh, manual it's directly from Ford. Um, we were lucky enough to get a hold of some of those. So as you can see here, um, let's talk about cylinder deactivation. Um, that's going to be a solenoid that is going to be in your engine. So the engine itself has internal parts that are going to be different for 2021. Because if you don't know what cylinder de deactivation is, when you're driving under a low load or maybe coasting down a hill or something and the engine senses that it doesn't need all eight cylinders firing, it's going to close up the valves and quit putting gas into four of the cylinders and you're going to be in four cylinder mode. Is that a bad thing? We don't know yet. It was on some GM vehicles. They say that that system was a little bit different. Um, they had some problems with oil consumption and everything. Um, that's kind of a big deal. One side note on cylinder deactivation, guys, if I've looked at all of the Ford documentation I can find out there on the internet, all of their brochures, all of their information on their website, um, it never mentions cylinder deactivation, not even on the building price. So why is Ford keeping that a secret or, or maybe it's not a secret, but why are they not telling people before you buy the vehicle that it's got cylinder deactivation on it? I mean, if you look at your uh, sticker, it's going to tell you that it has variable valve timing and all of these other uh, changes they've made to the engine over time, but they don't list that as one of them. So inside the truck, we've got the back sliding glass open so you can hear the exhaust a little bit more. Sam does have a side exit aftermarket exhaust on this. If you're curious as to how we have a aftermarket exhaust on this new truck that doesn't have systems yet, we've got a video for that. I'll put a card right here so you can click on that. It'll also be at the end of the video and in the description. So we're talking about cylinder deactivation from what you hear inside the cabin. Does your exhaust sound like it's jake breaking like a tractor trailer? Obviously we thought this could be an issue, but Sam's had a few days with the truck now. I can't, I can tell when it's doing it occasionally, but it's so unnoticeable. I don't even think it's a problem for, for people. Even with the, like when the factory exhaust, I couldn't ever tell when it was happening. Now that I've got the aftermarket on, I can occasionally tell when you're cruising down the road and you're barely giving it any gas, the the exhaust gets a deeper tone for a moment. It's uh, 
Um, I guess that's because it's got four cylinders that aren't activated and it just changes tone a little bit. Doesn't sound bad. It doesn't, I, I'm not sure what the sound problems were. I know the Chevy guys were having some problems with that. As soon as you hit the gas though, like jump into it. Sounds fine to me. I, I don't have any problems with it, even with a pretty, um, pretty loud aftermarket exhaust on here it's not a problem we're literally out in this video trying to make it do it so we can film it for you guys right there that was it that's all it was I mean, and he had to make it do it so he's got to be feathering the pedal trying to just barely be pushing the gas and literally it's just the exhaust note goes up in bass note a little bit like a little deeper tone that's all it is make driving wise not that big of a deal mechanically maybe a different story yeah the other big change to the engine for 21 is instead of having an oil pump chain it's now a rubber drive belt and it runs down into the oil pan it's going to be a wet belt so how does that affect this engine for liability um what is the service interval on this thing when the truck has actually had the ecu cracked and guys want to put a supercharger or twin turbo system that things of that nature what happens to this drive belt is that the weak link now uh, whereas uh, oil pump gears and crank sprockets were the problem in the past is this belt the weak link that uh, tuners and high performance guys have to figure out what they're going to do to get around this rubber drive belt that comes on the 2021 that's also something that's not in any ford documentation that i can find unless you dig deep like i have here we're going to put on a jlt oil separator catch can whatever you want to call it this one came off of my 2015 f-150 it was the eco boost um, these kits are uh, universal and um I'm going to show you that it'll go on this 21 just fine. If you're wondering why I'm putting an oil separator on this engine, because it is port injected and direct injected, I'm going to go ahead and put it on there anyway, because we have cylinder deactivation on this model. I want to know what's coming through there. I want to keep an eye on that. Nobody knows what cylinder deactivation on the Coyote motor is going to cause. So I'm going to have a catch can on here. I'm going to keep an eye on it. That way I know what's happening with my engine. And if I see anything crazy going on, guys, you know I'm gonna let you know and um, I'll keep you updated. It's two hoses, some connectors, and a can. I mean, it, it, the assembly of this, uh, the, the directions are in the box. Mine's already put together because I just unhooked it from my previous truck, but um, I'm gonna show you how to mount it in this one. And uh, if you're worried that it's gonna hit on the hood or anything, I'll show you that it doesn't, but uh, it's gonna be basically the same install as, uh, in the past you're just going to have to mount this in a different location what we're going to do with this thing is on the battery right here there's plastic for the battery uh, holder and uh, you're going to mount it right in here and what i'm going to use to mount it guys is a couple of screws like this whatever you got laying around will work this isn't rocket science guys so we're just screwing into plastic Gotta watch that. I'm good for one of those every once in a while. That's it. Now all you've got to do, once you've got that mounted, is you've got your two hoses. Just like in previous gens, this is your end from this connection on your engine. And this is your back either you're out of the, the catch can and back over to the engine all you got to do now is hook those up brad film this in fast motion and make me look good guys if you're wondering how to get these off it's the small side right here you've got this right here but you want to pull back on this and just pull off so use your finger to pull this back and give it some pressure they'll come right off Voila.
back row driver bonus tip for you. When you're done, you've installed your JLT, take the hose that you just took off, put it in the box with your directions and everything, put it up in your garage. That way, when it comes time to put it on another vehicle, put it back to stock, you sell your truck, whatever, you've got the factory parts put back on and you don't have to go pay Ford parts for another one. If they got it in stock, because we are in a time where you can't get anything right now. But every time we do a mod, we keep the factory parts instead of selling them. It's tempting to get a few bucks for it, but you never know. Don't ever say you're never getting rid of something because that's when you're going to get rid of it. Exactly. Guys, we've done a lot to this truck so far. If you want to see the entire build playlist, we'll put it right here in the end card. We'll also put it in the description. Guys, thanks for watching Backroad Driver. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace.